26, 2015 special meeting to order of the San Mateo County Harbor Commission. And tonight we have only one item on the agenda, which is um, reorganization of Harbor Commission selection of officers. However, we do have a few um, public comments that are not specific to the agenda item. President Brennan, point of order, can we do roll call first? Yes, roll call please. Commissioner Bernardo? Here. Commissioner David? Here. Commissioner Matouche? Here. Commissioner Paravano? Here. President Brennan? Here. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the public comment. Um, and the first uh, speaker slip is James Lee. Good afternoon to the commission. Uh, I'm here in my capacity as the former secretary of St. Pete's Harbor. I just want to give you an update on what's going on in Redwood City. Um, as you well know, Pete's Harbor no longer exists. Uh, the docks were pulled out um, before approval was given by the State Lands Commission to do so. Uh, so the preliminary exploratory conversations we were having with the Harbor District about possibly taking over the public section of the of the harbor is a moot point, as you well know. Uh, I'm up here today just to say thank you, to, especially to Commissioner Brennan for spearheading that, for saving, for trying to save a public resource on the peninsula, uh, for the boating community, for people who are interested in public spaces and public recreation areas. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have um, Sean Cartwright. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, I just wanted to thank the Commission, and in particular, Commissioner Brennan, for leading the district's move to the new offices in El Granada. I know that this will save the county taxpayers and the district quite a bit of money in the long run, and I appreciate that you did the right thing. I also wanted to thank the Commission for creating committees to focus on important issues like beach replenishment, water quality, and public safety. It's nice to see that positive change has been happening within the district since Commissioner Brennan's election a few years ago. And it's nice to see you guys again since two brain surgeries. Thanks. Thank you. And um, the next slip is from, and sorry if I don't get the last name right, um, Tom Lindbarger. Must be mine. <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Tom Leinbarger, and I live in Emerald Hills, which is really Redwood City with a bit of snob appeal. Uh, I just wanted to thank the Commissioners, and in particular, Commissioner Brennan, uh, to make sure the district began videotaping and broadcasting its meetings. Uh, I think good governance practice, broadcasting meetings, I think, is good government practice, and it's a prerequisite to have an open government. Uh, the meeting uh, I'm grateful to Sabrina for advocating that this happened even before she became a commissioner and I would like to see Penn TV again cover it because not all the areas are, are presently getting the meetings because it's been limited and I really uh, did not like it when there was no uh, programming available on this. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, next we're going to go to item one, and um, we do have a number of speaker slips. Um, the first one I'm going to call is someone who has to, it says here they have to leave early. So, um, Mark DePaul. Paula? Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Mark DePaula, and I believe Glenn uh, Laszlov should be terminated from his temporary position as manager <coughs> due to the remarks saying he will not be able to work with Sabrina Brennan, who is the president and commissioner of the Harbor District. One at will employee does not outweigh 120,000 plus voters that elected Commissioner Brennan, and I'm one that voted for her. I'm sure the other commissioners will terminate Glenn Lasloff's employment. Who works for who? Thank you. Thank you. 
Next we have John Dooley. My name is John Dooley. I'm a commercial fisherman. Um, when I read <coughs> what Commissioner Bernardo had to say about this board had to be realigned here, I, I agree with him because of the simple reason is, you know, I personally have nothing against you, Sabrina. I want you to know that. I don't have nothing against you. But the thing is, you did, you're out of control. And we got to bring things back into perspective here. I mean, I know you said in the paper that you don't talk like that. You don't threaten people. I, I think that's, a, that's not true. And the thing is, there's people on this staff that have been threatened. That's why you have two lawsuits pending. Your actions caused two more lawsuits that are to be coming. You're going to cost this district a lot of money here. And I don't think that's right. We could be using that money to expand the pier do things in the harbor that was more constructive. I would uh, appreciate that, you know, you would run the meeting like it's supposed to, like the chain of command. This, this board, this commission has lost the chain of command. The staff is supposed to bring you the information and present it at board level. I've sat here several meetings where you made the whole agenda up, handed it to the general manager and shoved it down his throat and said, present it and then Pietro Paravano calls you on it, and whoa. The guy, uh, the general manager at the time says, I didn't prepare that, you did. That's not right, you didn't clear it with none of the other commissioners, you know? And then what really upset me, that poor guy with the computer. He installed those computers, and then you guys got messed up on moving, and they sat over there, and then you took that guy and ran him under the cold. And he no more looked like a thief to me than anybody. He was just a small businessman like everybody else in this town trying to get ahead. He, you guys all voted on it to order those computers and everything like that. But you killed that guy. And that's not right. You can't treat people that way and expect them to sit down and not say nothing. You know, you've lost the respect of the people that put you in office, and that's wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Catherine Slater Carter. Good evening, members of the board. Um, I have um, been informed that Fran Pollard, Jack McCarthy, and Jimmy Benjamin have each sent you letters. Uh, they are letters in support of President Brennan. Uh, the Coastside Dems um, has issued a letter you have it in front of you essentially for for the sake of expediency the Dems are troubled with this special meeting today we feel that commissioners should be consistent with their actions with Ms. Brennan as they were with Mr. Bernardo in 2013 as you and I won't go into the details I am sorry that this board did not stand up for Ms. Brennan when uh, she was being uh, maligned by other board members uh, and the letter goes on that we support Ms. Brennan because she has been a steadfast advocate for the residents of the San Mateo Harbor District. She is thoughtful, hard, and hardworking. We're proud of all of her accomplishments, and we um, support her. Uh, my letter says that this is the most misogynistic action I have ever seen. If Sabrina were a man, people would have said, this is great. She's so determined. She really has the ability to make decisions and push the agenda forward. But when you get a strong woman, you suddenly want to nail her. And I'm really disappointed. I realize what's going on, and I understand. I um, recommend that Tom be made president. I think we don't need the drama. This board has only been in position for four months after a grand jury report that called for major change, but that major change depends on a competent uh, general manager. You don't have a permanent general manager, and from the, all the drama that's been going on with the current general manager, I'm disappointed in that too. So I think you guys need to get a good, competent general manager, bring in a good, competent legal team, and a good, competent uh, personnel team, 
and get this Harbor <coughs> District back to what it should be, transparent and representing the people of San Mateo County and serving the people of not only San Mateo County, but the state and the world. Thank you very much. So next we have uh, Brian Waters. He's not here yet. Bill Kehoe. Thank you, Commissioners. Bill Kehoe from West Beach. Um, Catherine already alluded to the Coastside Democrat um, letter, which I fully support. Um, I also know, and I was hoping they would get here, that some members of AFOG were going to be here to, support, to speak and support of Sabrina. Um, one of the issues with us being prepared for this is that it happened late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning on a holiday weekend. Um, very difficult for any kind of board or commission to get together and look at what's going on and write a coherent letter and get agreement on it. So, this rush to judgment, I think Catherine alluded to it, seems to be very misogynist, something that everybody wants to happen, on something that I feel is a he said, she said kind of thing. And you're already jumping to conclusions that, well, it must be Sabrina. As someone who is, uh, let me say, maligned in the press when I was running for office on uh, basically hearsay, I personally find this offensive. Now, I'd like to remind both uh, Commissioner Nicole David and Tom Matouche, that most of us that worked on your election and worked hard to get you elected was because we wanted someone who would have Sabrina's back. We, for the most part, for the past two years, have watched her be castigated and maligned and assaulted by previous board members, and we found it offensive. We found that their whole way of trying to close down any kind of open meetings and the lack of transparency as something that just has to be stopped. And Sabrina has always stood up for that. And we're hoping that you will back her up. And to you, Mr. Ber uh, Commissioner Bernardo, you went through this in 2013, and Sabrina helped you. And for the things that I've read in the press, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you were misquoted, I find to be just apprehensive. I, I, I just, I pray you didn't really say those kind of things. But again, Majority of the uh, voters of San Mateo County voted overwhelmingly for Sabrina because they wanted her to come in here and clean up 40 years of mismanagement and abuse and misuse of, of taxpayer dollars. And it hasn't happened yet. We hope it happens soon. You need to get organized. And I think this is also, I want to put this in because I see county members here. I think this is very well timed for this whole LAFCO um, review when after many years of times, people you know, have been crying about getting the Harbor District cleaned up, now there seems to be a rush to all of a sudden dissolve it before you've even had six months to investigate the 10 or 20 years worth of corruption and cronyism that has been going on. And if I need to say it, I, I, I still can't believe the way you awarded the last contracts to the processors and not taking the highest bidder. I mean, that, again, I just sit there and, and, and absolutely Fabulous is what's going on. I can say more, but I don't have time. We support Sabrina. We want you to support her. And then what she decides to do after that is really up to her. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have Brian Rogers. Yeah, I think a lot of you know who I am. You've, I've been here to speak a couple of times. Um, Basically, you know, the idea that a person who's worked for you for less than two weeks submits a letter that is, is a fabrication seems far-fetched. This is a, an individual who's a professional. He's worked for multiple government agencies. And the idea that he just came in and attacked somebody out of the blue um, would be a, a big surprise to me. Um, this is not the first person that's, that's been attacked in that same manner. Uh, others of the staff have. Um, I think that President Bernardo's attacked most of the commissioners, um, is abusive to the public, and needs to step down as being president so that there is a, a much more reasonable face up in front of the public. 
um, not one that is, is in the middle of raw suits and creating more on a regular basis, it seems. Um, so the idea that, that this is happening now, whether it happened in, in three months, six months, it, it all the difference is, is how many lawsuits are filed before it happens. It still needs to happen. So yeah, I, I don't understand why we didn't do this a while ago. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm all in favor of, of having this, having your room. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Kelsey, there's no last name given. Tom uh, Limbarger, Barger, sorry, Tom. Hello, Commissioners. My name is Tom Limbarger, and I live in Emerald Hills. I'm speaking today to urge you to keep Sabrina as president and let her finish her term. Even though you were within your rights to call this meeting on short notice, three business days for a matter like with, with such large public uh, interest is insufficient, and especially after the Memorial Day holiday. And last time this happened, it was done at a regular meeting, and I think that would be an appropriate way to do this. A special meeting uh, is very inconvenient and made it hard for people to attend. I'm surprised that this much effort is being spent on such a swift removal of Mrs. Brennan. She's done nothing as a commissioner that we as voters did not ask her to do. I worked on her campaign and I enjoyed working on her campaign. Her leadership has led to greater transparency <coughs> at the district, money savings in the move to offices to El Granda, and many more actions that benefited county residents. Please keep Sabrina on as president. Please let any motion to replace her fail and respect the 120,000 voters in the county who voted for Sabrina. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have April Vargas. My name is April Vargas. I live in Montera. Um, thanks for the opportunity to comment. Um, I know all five of you commissioners, and I've supported you um, in your efforts to oversee the district operations and chart a course for the future um, on behalf of all of us in San Mateo County. Uh, earning the trust and confidence of the public remains one of the biggest challenges that the district continues to face. I applaud President Brennan for her, un for her untiring efforts to bring accountability and transparency to an agency that has really been struggling to be able to make strides in these areas. It's essential that the board is able to work cooperatively and efficiently. If Commissioners uh, Brennan's forthright and focused approach uh, has influenced the ability of the other commissioners and staff to make well-reasoned and sound decisions, then I think a discussion like this one is definitely warranted. I have no doubt that Commissioner Brennan's foremost concern is the well-being of the district and the people it serves. Uh, and if her leadership style is perceived to be counterproductive, I'm sure she's willing to seriously consider how she can work more successfully with the board and staff. If uh, the board finds itself in a position to vote to replace Sabrina as president, I would urge you to vote for current Vice President Tom Matouche uh, uh, in Sabrina's stead while retaining Sabrina on the board to continually work together. A lot of the things that the district has been through, particularly with staffing and interaction, has been extremely difficult. As someone that served on a local board for four years, I realized that people's um, ideas and their vision for the work they should be doing are not always in alignment, but it is so critical that we remain respectful of each other even when we don't agree. Adding in the fact that there's been instability in staffing and a lot of issues that have come up from past uh, management teams that have been embarrassing to the district, difficult to kind of understand and um, remedy has made the work of the commission, I think, even more difficult than it has been. 
So I have a, a tremendous amount of gratitude and empathy for everybody that's sitting on the board today. And I'm really hoping that you can all find a way to work together, uh, try to keep personalities out of it as much as possible, which I know is not easy, but we're all really counting on you to do good work, to maintain our beautiful harbors here and on the coast side, and just make people continue to believe that public agencies and government, democratic government can work. So thank you. Thank you. So next, uh, I, I'd just like to ask the audience to respect the speakers because it's a little hard to hear. Um, uh, the next speaker is Leonard Warren. Good afternoon, uh, commissioners. Um, I just jotted down a bunch of bullet items so this is not going to flow very well and I have to run off to an, uh, a, a board meeting can, of my own. Can uh, you speak up just a little bit? Uh, I have to run off to a board meeting of my own uh, uh, where we uh, work honest and ethically, uh, something this board could learn from. Uh, I, but the, the first question I have is, why does this have to be done at a, a, a hastily called special meeting in an out-of-the-way place that's about as far away from the other harbor as you can get and still be in San Mateo County? Um, the, uh, the way that I have to characterize this is this is a shoot the messenger thing. Some of you don't like what you're hearing from your board president, so instead of working with her to tone it down, uh, and, it, you know, by the way, the, uh, the, the other uh, uh, aspect of this is um, the, uh, uh, Commissioner Brennan is, is uh, uh, a lot like me, with no hesitation to say that the emperor has no clothes, okay? And there's a lot of emperors related to this district that have no clothes, and they don't like to hear it. And that's what's going on here. The hiring process for this guy was really screwy. A meeting in a back room somewhere in the afternoon with only three commissioners in attendance, no video except for a very carefully edited 12-minute set of clips. This is so screwy, and I have to quote, uh, a, a director that, that used to be on, on the board where I'm running off to that I didn't agree with a lot of the time, but this is a great quote and I repeat it a lot. Hire in haste, repent in leisure. You're going to have months to repent over this hiring decision. You should not be doing this at all. And um, I, I'm, I, I don't know what to really say about this. I, this is just so wrong. What, we, what this district is, is it's a, train, it's a train wreck on fire, and you have somebody saying, we're going to crash, we're on fire, and you don't want to hear it. You know, the, the, what you just heard about your IT guy was so wrong. I've seen the evidence. Good riddance to that guy. I hope he never gets another job. Um, the, the, the district has squandered tens of thousands of dollars on that IT guy, and people are beating up Commissioner Brennan over the way she handled it. Well, maybe she could have handled it a little bit better, but she wasn't wrong in what she did. She did the right thing. She pointed out things that are wrong in this district. And, you know, I'm sorry if some of you don't want to hear it. And you got one commissioner here that if Sabrina Brennan put an agenda item on saying water is wet, he'd vote against it just because he'll vote against anything that she wants to do. And all of you know who I'm talking about. So you shouldn't be doing this. And for all those of you who think this board can throw her off the board, there is no legal way to do that, so don't worry about it. It cannot be done. Thank you. Um, next, we have Porter McHenry. Hi, Porter McHenry, president of the Half Moon Bay Seafood Market Association. I represent organizations of commercial fishermen fishing out of Pillar Point Harbor. We don't know all the circumstances that have led to tonight's special meeting, and we don't have enough information to offer suggestions to how the agenda item should be specifically resolved. But we do have two things that we'd like the board and the public to know. The first thing is that the board of directors, staff and members of HMBSMA and HMBGMA 
I'd like to publicly acknowledge and express appreciation for the support of the commercial fishing industry that has been shown by Harbor Commissioner Sabrina Brennan. Commissioner Brennan has worked to understand complex issues prior to voting on agenda items that impact our fleet, which is something we did not experience with a majority of previous har Harbor Commissioners, staff, or administrators. We are an industry that respects hard work and bravery, which are traits that we witnessed Commissioner Brennan exhibit under the abusive and negative conditions of the former board and former general manager. We believe that the much needed change that we fought for and won would not have been possible without Commissioner Brennan's dedication to transparency and fair local government. The second thing we'd like you to know is that members of HMB SMA and HMB GMA continue to remain optimistic for the change that was fought for and won with the election of Commissioners David M. and Tooch. In a relatively short time, these new commissioners have also proven to be committed to transparency, supporting the commercial fishing industry, and in doing the hard work required to be informed commissioners. We believe wholeheartedly that in spite of the challenges, our harbor community has a brighter future than it did six months ago. We are excited to engage with a harbor commission and staff that wants to work with the commercial fishing fleet and wants to see the harbor thrive. We are hopeful that whatever happens tonight, the commission will find a way to move past conflict and conduct the business of the district in a positive manner. There is much work to do. We are in the process of planning a major event at Pillar Point Harbor to promote the district and our industry and with more information on that very soon. As a, as a major stakeholder, we are committed to participating in the process of improving Pillar Point Harbor and increasing awareness for the vibrant commercial fishing industry that operates there. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Jeff Clark. <coughs> <coughs> Commissioners, staff, I hate being here. I hate to have to come to a meeting, listen to everybody that drank your Kool-Aid. I'm here because I read the paper, the rumors that you talked about for 45 minutes last meeting. Without, you're quoted in the paper about our business you never talked to us before those papers were printed. You never talked to us. We're your tenant. We're in the harbor. Why can't you, you say you can't find us? Really? We're your tenant. We own the biggest, best surf contest in the world. You can't find us? We got a permit for the 2016 season. It was a three year permit. In your words, on your video, you somehow lost the plot on that and accepted another application from a competing source without talking to us, you know, what's going on? How, you know, how's the contest going? You talk to us about the, the open space. You talk to us about photographers. You talk to us about encroaching charter boats or, or charter boats being banned. That's not true. None of that stuff's true. I think that might be outside the scope of your jurisdiction. Your jurisdiction is a permit for a very small piece of property. This is our business. Now you're entertaining the WSL, the World Surfing League, your other members of our community. I've seen John Olam's name on emails with you, the WSL. Transparency? I would like to see the rest of your emails and your personal ones too. Because what I think is that some eyes will be opened at the way she, Sabrina, does business. And 
for you to meddle in our business, to get, obstruct my livelihood? Yes, you're right. There's no, you're right. You are in lawsuits. And unfortunately, there may be more. I hope that this Harbor District can survive that. I'm in support of change. Thank, Thank you. you. Next we have Pamela Fisher. Hi, my name is Pamela Fisher and I live in Half Moon Bay and I'm here this evening, if I can get this up, as a um, board member of an organization um, called AFOG, Advocates for Open Government. I am reading into the record a letter from um, our president and another board member who were unable to attend this meeting. Um, we have done not an official poll of our board because we could not have a meeting last night because our president is, is quite ill. However, they've asked me to come and read this letter into the record and it does reflect an informal poll of the board members of AFOG. We strongly protest the special meeting that is scheduled for May 26th at 5.30 at the Oyster Point Yacht Club and we feel this meeting should be canceled too late and the topic of Commissioner Sabrina Brennan's presidency should be rescheduled to a regular meeting held at the regular time and at the regular location. First of all, we strongly support the work that President Brennan has done and all that she's accomplished in the last two and a half years in the area of open government, such as televising meetings, financial responsibility, reducing the cost of district operations and IT computer purchasing, and inventory practices and moving the district's offices to save money. This is not in the letter, but in two and a half years, she inherited a, a mess that was absolutely um, validated by the grand jury. And to, I think anything more um, in terms of leadership style, et cetera, are issues that can be dealt with if you address them openly and really seek to solve that issue. Regardless of how we feel about whether a person should or should not be removed from office, we're concerned about the process. We strongly object to the special meeting at a special time and special location. The timing is terrible. We, along with many members of the public, will not be able to make it to the meeting because we are physically not able to leave work early, drive through one of the most congested areas of Highway 101 traffic at the height of rush hour in order to make a meeting at 5.30. Having a meeting at this time and location is not open government. In fact, it seems quite the opposite. It seems that the board is attempting to limit the public's participation. If there are allegations of potential wrongdoing that are strong enough to warrant removal of a commissioner from office of presidency, then these allegations need to be fully investigated and verified, possibly by an independent third party. The removal of a person from office is serious and should not be rushed into by other board members who may just have a different opinion. Again, to ensure true open government and full public participation, this meeting should be canceled, rescheduled to a regular meeting, regular meeting, location, and be given regular meeting public notice. Thank you. Thank you. Debbie, um, could you tell me where the water bottles are? Because I'd, no. I'd like to get another one. Just take mine. Never mind, I've got one. Okay. Thank you. Um, Next, we have uh, Mike Ferrara. <clears throat> Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Mike Ferrara. Uh, I live in Moss Beach. I have been a uh, planning commissioner, a council member, and a member of the civil grand jury currently. I'm in a volunteer leadership of an environmental organization. Last year, the voters of this county thought they were voting for reform. They thought they got reform. 
we have before us tonight is not reform. Not a snap meeting at 5.30 in the afternoon. <clears throat> the forces of counter-reform, indeed, could be seen as being victorious tonight. I'm probably too disappointed in this meeting to, to really go to my full time. I just want to make it really clear that I think the voters are being let down tonight, big time. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Cassandra Clark. <clears throat> Thank you for having me here. Um, I'm Cassandra Clark of El Granada, we own uh, Maverick Surf Company and the event Titans of Mavericks. And my comments are specific to working with this Harbor District, which I work with every day, every single day. And I've been to meetings here at this site. This isn't an unusual site to hold Harbor District meetings. So I wanna make that point clear. Our business is in the harbor, our business is with this contest. And my concern is not necessarily with Sabrina because I agree with some of the changes that you've attempted to make. I like the, the direction, but I think it's uh, a matter not of substance, but of style. Uh, my concern is that in the process of looking at our contest and how we run it, some, uh, there have been some communication with others who are not involved in our contest and allowed to come in and interfere with our business here in California. And I think that's a disappointment because we're your tenants. We're right here. We're right here every day and open for questions. I've se I sent you messages even via Twitter. That's how I finally got a hold of you. And you put me off for two weeks before contacting me. But in that two week span, you went to the press and never came to us to find out the answers to those questions. You, at the last meeting, spent 45 minutes going on public record with rumors and innuendo about our event. Again, saying that you wanted answers, but not able to get them. And in fact, you stated that you weren't able to get them until our attorney informed you of that. There, is, there are issues related to that in the structure of the harbor. There is no doubt. And I would hope that you're, that this will keep, you'll still stay on the board in some capacity to participate with the changes that you want to bring in. But in leadership, we need, we need to govern a board and govern a district with a lot more sensitivity and a lot more openness to those who are affected by the very issues that you decide upon. And that's what I'm, what I'm feeling very passionate about this event. It's, it's just, it's so hard to know that I've put my own home in, up into this. I've taken out a loan against my own home to help run this contest and to have one commissioner and the president at that. To interfere with that and put my home at risk is extremely hurtful. It is damaging to our business, to our reputation, and I don't think any president in any capacity ha should have that much power to do that. I would just recommend going back and working with the rest of the board and being open in your communication no matter what the reorganization brings. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Mary Lorenas. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary Lorenis, and um, my husband, Ed Lorenis, cannot be here tonight. He was needed to help take care of his aging mother in Santa Cruz, who had surgery. I was supposed to be there with her as well, but I chose to stay home and come to this meeting. Um, so I'm speaking on his behalf. Before I go any further, though, I just have to say Kudos to President Brennan. You're sitting there and you're taking an awful lot on the chin. Um, and you're doing an excellent job. But anyway, um, 
My husband and I have known Sabrina Brennan for many, many, many years. And the Sabrina we know has always been an outspoken advocate for the Coast Side on multiple environmental causes and political issues. And for that, we have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for her. I don't think I've ever seen another person on the coast stick their neck out on the chopping block as Sabrina Brennan has. We've always found Sabrina to go that extra 10 miles in everything that she does. She has high expectations for herself and for others. I will not debate whether this is fair or right or wrong. This is who Sabrina is. Her expectations of herself, she puts on other people. Sabrina speaks her mind. And again, I will not debate whether this is fair, right, or wrong. This is just who Sabrina is. But I can tell you from the last set of commissioners we had, the fact that Sabrina speaks her mind has been a breath of fresh air. Personally, and I speak more for myself only on this, I can't help but be reminded of the cultural fact that in our society, if you are a man and you are aggressive and assertive, you're just being a man. But if you are a woman and you act aggressive and you act assertive and you make demands, then you're just being a bee with an itch. During Sabrina's first term as Harbor Commissioner, we witnessed her constantly being treated in an unprofessional, if not cruel, manner by her fellow commissioners, some staff members, and some, some officials. We all know this is true. It's documented, well documented on film. For us, it is disheartening to see what is taking place with the Harbor District. But we realize we do not have all the facts. But some serious charges have been levied here with some serious consequences. I will not debate whether they are fair or right or wrong, but I urge everyone who is involved in this to stop and think of what their motives really are before they start making these accusations. We want the best for, what's for the community, the public, and our harbors, and we support Sabrina Brennan in whatever decision she makes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next we have Kelsey, and I'm sorry I can't pronounce your last name. Please tell, tell us yes. your last name if you want sorry. to share it. Yeah, hi, my name is Kelsey Ka'ulu Kukui. Mouthful. I manage the talent and partnership initiatives for Titans and Mavericks. Um, first, I want to thank everyone on the Harbor Commission for taking the time to listen to the public comment the last few meetings and the opinions and statements of those supporting Titans and Mavericks. I would like to address Sabrina Brennan about the Harbor Commission meeting last week in South San Francisco regarding item number two. You said you were confused because you would need to be able to see the permit and read it to be able to vote on it. This confused me because at the June 15, 2013 meeting, which is available on your website, you can be seen voting yes on item 13, special event three-year permit for Mavericks Invitational. In the past two years, have you not been able to view the permit? I would think as the president of the Harbor Commission, you'd be privy to seeing the permit. And also, since you knew the item was going to be on the agenda for the May 20th meeting, I would think that you would have wanted to view the permit prior to that meeting. Um, it's my personal belief that you have an unwarranted biased opinion on our company, and I believe it to be unhealthy to have you be a voting member on the permit as you clearly are not in support of our company and seeing Titans and Mavericks succeed. This can be viewed on your public official Facebook page, which you can be seen posting negative articles about Titans and Mavericks and cartel management for that fact that you're quoted in, and also you're liking comments from users who are calling name calling cartel management or that are negative. We've been working so hard and diligently to ensure that this event is the greatest it can be and the best thing for the community. We've created this 550 page book with every meticulous detail you could ever imagine pertaining to the event and we've worked very closely with all our partners and supporting agencies to make sure that this event is safe and done with the utmost level of professionalism. The fact that you're stating that you're worried about public boat charters could be blocked and not be able to make money for the event is frankly untrue and as the others pointed out last week. But what I did see is that you posted a link again on your public official Facebook page showcasing one of those very chartered boats, which was in no way related to Titans of Mavericks or cartel management, almost getting taken out by a wave, and you titled it, Check Out This Charter Boat Adventure at Pillar Point Harbor, which to me does not reflect that you're concerned with the safety, which is our utmost importance in the waterway. 
We already addressed it at last week's meeting, but it's frustrating to see you stating that you've heard rumors about a barge in the water to block media and boats. That would be extremely unsafe and unrealistic. Um, I would like to see the harbor have a bright future and for us to be seen as partners and to be treated with fairness and respect. I hold no ill will towards you, Sabrina, and honestly want to give you the benefit of the doubt, but when you can't review a permit that was clearly identified as a key agenda item in review, how can I honestly think that this leadership moving forward in its capacity is in the best interest of our athletes in the community of Half Moon Bay? The last thing I want to address is your concerns about the event being seen on the digital live stream by the locals, as stated in a global press release by Red Bull TV. They're doing the live digital stream. I want to thank you guys for the opportunity to speak. If anyone from the Harbor Commission has any questions or concerns pertaining to Titans and Mavericks, we're here as we've always been for open communication. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Brian Waters. Good evening, Sabrina, Nicole, Tom, Pietro, Roberto. And of course, Glenn, Steve, getting to know you guys. I look forward to getting to know all of you for the years to come. So I'm preparing a script here, and I don't usually do this, but um, I thought after our team meetings and all we've been through, um, I really want to address this specifically. So thank you for approving our permit, by the way, on the last. I understand and respect the abstain and for business reasons, Tom. But also, uh, I want to take a step back and how we got involved in this, the opportunity. It all started a year ago when our organization was invited by the local community and the leadership of Mavericks. And Jeff Clark and his team did just that. And it was very carefully and well thought out done and respected. Our mission has been and will be to produce a premium big wave surfing event, Titans and Mavericks. Throughout the rebuild of this event, our organization has remained united, focused, on the talent and community first. While the athletes are at the center of all of this, we celebrate their risk and reward that they take with each wave ridden for our enjoyment. They are why we are here, and we have earned their trust and support. You've heard sentiments from Sean Dollar, Ken Collins, Anthony Tajnik, Colin Dwyer, and key committee five members who have the deepest roots with over 100 years of Mavericks history combined. Sabrina had mentioned that there have been four iterations of the event. Yes, and we are the fifth and the final for this organization and Mavericks. This is not one of many, like the other groups, we are focused on this property and only Titans and Mavericks. Since our reboot of the event, we have secured long-term partners for the live, live streaming broadcast, Red Bull Media House, an eco-conservation partner, Monterey Bay Aquarium, internet radio partner Pandora, HBO Sports, and other media partners. With all of our combined passion and expertise in running events, the Titans of Mavericks event will thrive. Our organization has produced a 550-page book, as Kelsey mentioned, that covers everything from logistics, safety, operations, and production. And you can bet the Coast Guard backing our permits and the nine other agencies we've been working with we have been completely transparent and they have met us and built relationships. What is troubling for me as Chief Operating Officer for Cartel Management, sitting in last week's meeting, you stated, Sabrina, you did not review our permit and cannot locate it. It came to us as a shock when you couldn't locate a permit for this event and take the time, make the time to review it, yet back in June of 2013 you approved the original permit. Then you couldn't find the updated application in which we provided a $5,000 cashier's check for. How do you think this type of negligence reflects on our company? May I have 30 seconds? Yes. Thank you. As a business partner, my hope was that you prioritize this event and review our permit, of which is highly regarded to the community. We took all the right steps with what I mentioned earlier and paying our financial dues to your organization. <laughs> I personally walked in that $5,000 check and was registered by Carrie Smith, and still it wasn't reviewed until weeks later, or I don't even know at this point. Again, this is the same permit that was approved. You and the board backed back in June of 2013. I feel our legal representation clearly pointed out these issues last week to you. Finally, our goal since the beginning has been to rebuild this property to a sustainable event every day. One, 
since day one for decades forward. As you can tell, I am frustrated by the notion and gestures that you seem completely disconnected and made attempts to push the permit review off the agenda visit later in summer, which would further hurt our business and timelines in which we take significant time to put in order. The board members to your left and right have observed, observed this type of behavior, and my hopes that are that due process is fair to our organization moving forward. Our goal is to have a concrete future for years to come, and even after battling unwarranted opposition, we hold no remorse for anyone and seek to drive forward to maintain long-term relationships that we will build over time. Thank you. I appreciate the additional information. I wanted to make one point of clarification, which is that I did abstain from voting on the permit, and Commissioner Matouche recused himself yes. um, from voting on the permit. So, just wanted to make that clarification, and do appreciate um, that additional information. So, I want okay. to acknowledge that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have um, Bud Rats. Hi. <clears throat> It's with sadness and disappointment that I'm here tonight. On February the 11th, I attended a board workshop uh, ran by uh, Bird Ives and open to the public. I was probably one of the two or three members of the public there. And uh, working with Bird at the end of a long evening, the commissioners agreed upon a set of norms for behavior. And unfortunately, over the past three months, I've watched these norms and behavior be eroded in terms of innuendo and people bringing, uh, individual commissioners and other people bringing personal political agendas to the meeting. Uh, then I was doubly shocked when I couldn't attend the meeting on Wednesday, but saw the newspaper articles on the half main at Blue Bay Review and the Daily Journal on Friday uh, talking about chaos at the Harbor Commission and so on. Uh, these actions really further eroded the public trust in this commission. And the actions that the commissioners take tonight and whether they uphold the norms of respect and other things and depersonalize the items on the agenda will have a very, very long-term impact upon the future of this commission and the district. Uh, you have a difficult decision because your actions over time created a real conundrum for you. And your problem tonight, I think, basically boils down to one of veracity. Whose veracity do you choose? Do you choose Sabrina's? And I unfortunately don't know Glenn, or do you choose Glenn's? That's a decision I'm glad that I don't have to make, but you guys have to make it. And you have to depersonalize it, and you have to put it in terms of the long-term benefit and health of the district. I wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this point, we've been going for almost one hour, so I'm going to call for a 10 minute break and we'll pick up uh, comments when we come back. Thank you. What time is it? Six run out of speaker slips if there are people that want to speak. No, there's plenty of speaker slips. Okay, there are speaker slips on this table here if anybody wants one that hasn't gotten one yet. And we only have about one, two, three, four, about eight more speakers to go. Um, so I'm going to um, call Mike Alfano. Harbor Commissioners, President Brennan, staff. My name is Mike Alfano, born and raised in Halfman Bay, 660 Magnolia Street. 
So I'm here tonight because I see bad board of governance. And it starts with leadership. And um, I know what it's like to be on the other side of that dais and, and, and make mistakes. I've made them. You know exactly where you're at. I think for the greater good, it might make sense to step aside and let Vice President uh, Atush step up and get us through this. I think it might be the right decision long term. Obviously, the district has had some reform, but unfortunately, the community hasn't seen enough, enough of it yet, in my opinion. There's still some work to be done, but if laugh goes here, watching these meetings, and the word disillusion is talked about, it's not a good thing. So if we want to keep the harbor as a special district, something has to change. And my feeling is that um, uh, that change needs to happen tonight. Um, reading the paper, the harbor district is in chaos. It's, it's, I think it's unnecessary, but it's something that we can avoid and I think we can change that tonight. Um, you know, I, I ran into Debbie Ruddock uh, at the punk at the uh, Shamrock Parade, and uh, we had a nice conversation. And she said to me, "You know, she really hopes that the Half Bay City Council isn't like the Harbor District." And that was interesting coming from somebody who I think supports you dearly, and I think that she meant that in in a good way. In that things need to change here. Um, and the last part for me. Um, and I was at this meeting, and at last, the last meeting we spent, it was actually an hour on video of the back and forth between, really it was just you, Sabrina, and uh, the attorney for uh, Cartel, and I just found it to be unnecessary. To me, it was staff that should be doing that. And here we had board members, you know, um, asking these questions, and, 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 and at the very end, you abstained. I just thought that was, it was hard for me to, uh, to swallow. So, um, I think you have good intentions, and I think we can get there, but I think right now we need to have some change, so I'm looking at this board to um, work together and make that change so we can move forward and keep our Harbor District. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Next, um, John Lynch. John Lynch, Half Moon Bay. Very few comments, but I just want to say that I fully support the activities that Sabrina has done for this board. Uh, only one thing with maybe a little bit of less of a hurry, but she's done a great job. I hope that you will continue to support her. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Dan Haggerty. <clears throat> Dan Haggerty, El Granada, 27-year uh, resident. I, uh, I'm about a five-minute walk from the harbor. Uh, I care a lot about the harbor, Pillar Point Harbor. Um, I don't know all of the circumstances that led to this meeting. Um, I do want, I, I do want to uh, just make the statement that I know um, Sabrina Brennan very well. I know she's done a lot of hard work for this community, for the coast, for the harbor district. Um, I know she is a strong-willed person. Um, uh, I know her heart's in the right mind, in the right place. Um, and I, I do believe that this is a great commission and that we could all work together. So I'm, I'm happy with whatever comes up tonight that um, can... Um, just keep this commission moving forward. And, uh, you know, we started, when Sabrina started, the, there were a lot of problems with the commission that were um, exposed. And so, um, you know, hopefully we can, we can get to a point where, you know, everybody um, can, can be proud of this, uh, this commission and, and, you know, we can just move forward and have a, have a beautiful harbor and keep it open and lovely for all of the visitors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have another slip for Bud Rats, but I think he already... I okay. Um, so next we have John Ollum. Yes. 
John Olive, Citizen Access TV. For about a year and a half, I sat here and watched Sabrina take abuse. I watched two investigations be launched because she put her email address on the bio page of the Harbor District. And then they refused to give her a Harbor District email address. And like any allegations you are going to hear tonight, I can back up every single thing I am going to tell you with either a document that was obtained by a BRA request or with video. There are no he said, she said aspects to my story. For a year and a half, I watched them change the rules. I watched them change the way that things get agendized. I watched them change the times the meetings start from 7 to 11 to make it 6 to 10, which just made it a lot harder. Mr. Bernardo, you remember that, don't you? Made it hard for you too, didn't it? I watched them do a lot of things like that. I watched them change the rules how you could talk to the lawyer, but then enforce them selectively. I watched them release documents showing Sabrina had incurred charges through the lawyer, but then they denied showing me the charges that Mr. Holsinger had achieved and other board members. They wouldn't do it. Watched all that go on for a year and a half, and I could go on and on. There's no point. At one point, the Harbor District was so upset with the exposure it was getting that the majority of the board members voted to end video recording of the meetings. You voted for that. The other two guys that are gone, they voted for that. My brother, who's not particularly political, doesn't really give a crap about this kind of ugliness, was so um, astounded that somebody would do something like that, that he pays for this device to pay for the broadband so we can televise these meetings live. We've done it many a time. You've seen this before, haven't you? Yeah, it's been at many a meeting. Every single meeting you saw us live cast, you weren't around. Did you know that your job came about because after they tried the second time to get an investigation against Sabrina, and the lawyers couldn't find nothing? Mr. Holsinger accused Ms. Savory of legal, or what was it, sloppy legal scholarship. Now, can you imagine anybody like Sabrina talking to your staff like that? They never said nothing to Mr. Holsinger. Mr. Holsinger, by the way, has accused Sabrina Brennan's support supporters of brandishing weapons in public at meetings. Again, I can show you the piece of paper where he did it. Just didn't bother you, did it, Mr. Bernardo? I'm going to go a little bit long. The reason I am no longer I'm holding this device is because that gentleman in the back corner decided that he did not want this meeting live cast. He pulled it off the window. When I realized the meeting was no longer being live cast, I asked who had it. The people behind that door in the bar said they would not give it back to me until the meeting was over. Then, it gets better, it gets better. I then asked, um, I told the officer here that one or two things was gonna happen. Either I was gonna get back my device, or he was, and he got it back for me. They didn't give it to him willingly. They actually told him he couldn't have it until the meeting was over. And he kind of straightened him out. Then he straightened me out. And I was told that I would be arrested if I turned this back on. I need to ask permission. Who do I need to ask? May I turn it on? I never had anything to do with turning it off, sir. I guess I need to ask you. May I turn it on? Just say yes. Just say yes. I, sure. I, I, I don't know why. I don't have no. Just say yes. Just say yes. Go ahead. Turn it on. It's Thank televised, you. isn't it? No, it's not. It was being televised. Thank you. I'd like to call the next speaker, which is Michael Stoggers. Good evening, uh, commissioners. My name is Michael Stogner. I'm from San Carlos, California. 
And I was thinking about the first time I met Sabrina, I think it was in 2010, and it was at a charter review committee meeting in uh, Redwood City. And um, she drove all the way over from Moss Beach to be at that meeting, and she demanded that the San Mateo County uh, make a video of the meeting and make it available for the public to see. And then the next meeting they had, I saw Sabrina Brennan at the meeting and she made the same demand because they still wouldn't do it. And I believe it was on the third time that she demanded that San Mateo County publicly make available information to the citizens who couldn't get to these meetings. So I know personally for four or five years that's been an issue for her. So I want to thank her for that. Now, tonight, on the one subject that we're here tonight, I have some good news for you. The commissioners, you have a great opportunity in front of you. Uh, mistakes are making, made all the time, and we learn from mistakes normally. Now, I'm here to tell you, I think this entire meeting is a mistake, and you've got a couple ways to solve it. You can actually just vote it out that Sabrina stays and the meeting's over and everything's back to normal, that you made a mistake. Uh, you also have, uh, I read two different articles, Half Moon Bay Review and San Mateo Daily Journal, and they wrote an article about a memo, and when I heard just a few things about the memo, I thought to myself, if I had an employee like that, I would fire him so fast for causing harm to the taxpayers who pay his salary and cause harm to these five great people that were elected by the people. So we, I think we have two, two challenges tonight. One, you can figure out whether we just forget the meeting or you vote properly, leave Sabrina exactly where the voters want her, leave her right where she is. Or you can also just vote to change it up a little bit. She's not going anywhere anyhow. Um, so the other thing is that and I think several people have mentioned it, that uh, over 120,000 voters have said they want Sabrina Brennan right where she is. So for three or four uh, commissioners, I just invite you to rethink your vote tonight, that's all. And do you think your one vote, which is much more powerful than 120,000 people, because I know it takes a lot of work to get elected. So the other thing is no matter what, you not only need, no matter what happens tonight with Sabrina, you need to fire your interim temporary general manager because he's not good for San Mateo County taxpayers. He's not good for you. The other thing is you need to have employees that respect you. So thank you. Good luck tonight. I think you can, I think it's a great opportunity. Thank you. Next, um, we have Sean Cartwright. everybody. I'm speaking as myself, but I do want to point out that I'm the National Women's Political Caucus of Silicon Valley's Communications Chair. And uh, you know that, Nicole, because the National Women's Political Caucus endorsed you. But they also wrote a letter today strongly condemning this meeting and in strong support of Sabrina. <clears throat> they also said that we were not given adequate public notice of this meeting three days before a national holiday is not adequate notice for anybody for any meetings to occur. There is no urgency for this meeting. It's not like there's life or limb, money at stake. Um, also, when this meeting was called to get rid of you, uh, not only did Sabrina support you, but it was also done during a regular meeting. It was not during a shortly called meeting. Um, I wanted to point out, because I've been here for all these meetings, not in the past year because I had brain surgery, but before that, you, both of you, Parvando and Bernardo, you sat silently when all this money disappeared and was suddenly found in a drawer, when fishermen were having problems with leases, when money, when people were being charged like triple for their boats, when people weren't even being charged at all for their boats. And you guys didn't get upset about that. Parvando, sometimes I went whole meetings and you said two words. You didn't get excited at all. And suddenly, 
you are just like the chattiest guy in all these reports, in all these media reports. And I just find that really questionable because you weren't chatty at all during any of those meetings or any of those media reports. You sat silently with all these charges of sexual harassment. You sat silently with all the stuff that was going on with Holsinger and the lawyer and all these interim fights. You weren't in there in media. You weren't even trying to quell the personality disputes between the commissioners. And now you're suddenly very excited and you want to be in media reports and tearing apart commissioners. You sat silently by when everything was being torn down. <clears throat> um, if this LAFCA report goes poorly, which is expected, and says that the commission should be dissolved, that's on both of you because you've been here a long time. When Sabrina came in, it was about getting information. It was about transparency and bringing light to something that had lived in the dark and mold for a long, long time. Something that had hidden the shadows. And, uh, um, and I know that because it was Olam and I that were doing all the PRA requests because she couldn't get anything done because the general manager was such an obstructionist. And both of you didn't do anything to stop that. You were silent during all of that. And I, both of us were getting more obstructionist because all the PRA requests we did, and we weren't even getting cooperation through that. So then we were going to media saying, we can't get answers, she can't get answers. And I'm gonna go along too, just like everybody else. <laughs> so, so far, my count has been 15 speakers for Sabrina staying on as president and seven people against. So that's what the people in this room who made a meeting that was called short term before, before a large holiday came here on very short notice. Think about that. For the person that with the largest votes in history, who largely helped two of you get elected and then stood up for one of you when they tried to get rid of you. I also wanted to point out that so far, the seven people who spoke against have been about personality issues or topics that were off topic. Like the hearing wasn't about Mavericks. And then also things that were just like, I just don't like how this was done or I don't like how that was done, but not about we need to remove her because of this issue with the new GM. So the seven people who have spoken, almost none of them have been on topic. And that's something to keep in mind. In the end, I think that as the NWPC communications chair, I need to point out this would not be happening if it was a man. We would be saying, oh, this is great. This is like Wellstone. This is just like anybody else. This is such a maverick. But because it's a woman, we have to tear them down. And to see another woman take part in the tearing down of a woman is totally inexcusable. Next, we have James Lee. Thank you. 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 This board since Tom and Nicole were elected, and uh, it was my hope when I came here that I would be saying to Commissioners David and Matouche that, uh, first of all, congratulations on making it to the board, and second of all, that I regretted not helping you enough on your campaigns. Respectfully, I will withhold that comment until after this meeting. Um, I want to say if the board here cared about Mr. Lazoff and the allegations he made, you would have called this special meeting to figure out a way to investigate what was going on and have an independent third party come in as was articulated and to make sure that his complaints were fully heard. You would not be holding a meeting to strip someone of a ceremonial title to punish them for allegations that were made and have not been verified <coughs> or made under oath. I want to say that I am here as a friend of Sabrina as someone who worked on her campaign so you can call that bias but I can tell you if one of my friends had done what Sabrina was alleged to have done by media, I would not be up here supporting her or I would be saying something very different. Uh, I am here to say that no one was here two years ago at the meetings I came, at, came to when former commissioners were up here red in the face, raising their voices at Sabrina. No one said anything about personal style, about issues relating to, oh, we need to make sure that the public face of this board is someone more appropriate and someone more conciliatory. No one was up here doing that when actual verbal abuse was being said, when people were shouting over the one woman on the board at the time. Nothing was done in defense of that. And now all of a sudden, 
this is suddenly an issue, that seems really shady to me. And I want to say as an out gay person, I was so happy that when after the election last year that we have a majority LGBT board. And I'm really sad to see that possibly one of the three who hold the majority in parliament, so to speak, might be thrown under the bus tonight. Sabrina has done a lot for the Harbor District. By moving the offices to El Granada, it's going to save the district and county taxpayers money. She spearheaded that. Before she even got elected, she worked tirelessly to make sure that these meetings were recorded and available to the public, not just on PCTV, community television, but countywide through Penn TV. Sabrina has done so much for this special district and for the county voters who voted for her, and that's the reason why she got the margin she did, even before she had any political title at all, apart from Mid Coast Community Council. This is why we, everything she's done so far has been in service of county voters, and that's why she's here. None of what she's been doing has been different to what she promised her voters that she would do. And I want you guys to keep that in mind. And uh, I also want to thank Commissioner Brennan for letting folks both speaking in support of you and against you going over time. And for letting people do general comment when staff tried to stymie that. I really appreciate that. Not enough public officials do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that's um, <clears throat> all the public comments. Um, I have a public comment. <coughs> oh, is there another public comment? Somebody's pointing. No, okay. Um, so I have a public comment. Um, Every morning I wake up and think about how I can add value to Harbor District operations and the voters of San Mateo County. And frankly, the value I add is not in ceremonial management of bureaucracy. My strength is in developing creative solutions that address decades of mismanagement. And sometimes my questions and ideas rattle the cages of people attached to past dysfunctional practices. With the support of county voters, I was elected in 2012 by the biggest margin in history. I'm here to advocate for the needs of the fishing and boating communities, for public safety, for fiscal responsibility, for transparency, and for environmental stewardship and to promote active recreation, tourism, and economic prosperity for waterfront business communities. Since 2010, I've led the effort to build a publicly responsible harbor district. And the fact that this effort ruffles feathers doesn't change the fact that it will also take us into the 21st century. Of course, there is a difference between good governance and advocating for reform. But unless we as commissioners govern in a creative, modern way that moves us away from the district's past practices, we'll never solve the problems outlined in the civil grand jury report and the many other issues that continue to haunt the district. I accept responsibility for pushing the envelope I will endeavor to find new ways to work cooperatively with my colleagues. I'm always open to constructive feedback, and I'm committed to continuous improvement as a board member. I ask that my friends please continue to support this independent special district as it transitions to new board officers and new management. Your input is extremely valuable. The Harbor Commission has a tradition of rotating officers, so all board members have an equal opportunity to serve in each officer position. And it's my hope the board will continue to support this tradition of civility and equality. And with that, I'll pass the gavel to Vice President Matouche because I'm resigning as board president effective immediately.
Well, we need a vote on this. You don't need to. Okay. I'm sorry, what's your question? Do we need to vote uh, to make this happen? Or because uh, Commissioner Brennan <clears throat> has passed the gavel, we're done. Um, no, I don't think that's entirely accurate. As uh, the board, under the statutes, the board has to select a member to serve as president. Okay. Um, that part. You so, know, I, <clears throat> so that, uh, <clears throat> given what Commissioner Brennan's statement, it appears that you have no president. So, what so if they're under, if you would like to have a president at this meeting, someone should make a motion to that effect. So you open the floor for nominations for board president. That's the right. next step. You open the floor for not you say. Uh, I'd like to open the floor for nominations. Could we do comments first? We've opened the floor for nominations. I nominate Commissioner Matouche as the new board president. Is there a second? I second. Roll call. Well, wait, before there's roll call, maybe there should be opportunity for discussion. Comments. Okay. Discussion or comments? Both? Can we do that? Um, I'll go ahead then. I want to start by saying that I greatly respect Commissioner Sabrina Brennan and acknowledge the many positive things she has accomplished for our agency and for the coast with her bold and sustained activism. Sabrina has been an asset to the district. For two years, she fought hard on this board with mostly a four to one vote against her and often hostile atmosphere. However, the board has changed since November and now it is time to stop fighting and start working together. So to me, there is actually a much bigger picture here than just the recent allegations. And I carefully prepared my statement for tonight based on things I have things I know and that I've seen and not on judgment. For me, it's not a choice between Commissioner Brennan and General Manager Laza. For me, it's a, it's, we have to make a choice for the Harbor District. So last November, when I took on the challenge of improving district operations, I felt we needed to balance the district agenda with the carefully prioritized work plan to move forward. I thought that the work of the board should be focused on common goals and not individual positions. But the governance of the district has not been collaborative under Sabrina's leadership. Her demands on staff have not just been substantial and often overwhelming, but also mostly unilateral. So things have not been going so well. <clears throat> the district is going through a very difficult time with board and staff transitions, with lingering tensions, a pending move, LAFCO review, and many eyes watching. So all these pressures have strained the district, and I believe we urgently need a change in approach, and I've communicated that to Sabrina, that we need a change in approach if we want to make progress in improving Harbor District operations. We need a calm and steady hand leading the district going forward to navigate these rough waters, to keep pushing ahead in a haphazard manner will sink the district in spite of our very best intentions. And I really have no doubt that every single commissioner on this board has the best intentions for the Harbor District at heart. We also need to establish civil discourse at our district meetings so the public can feel safe <laughs> and hurt in their participation. The tone that has occasionally been set at our meetings with the public and in the office with staff is very counterproductive and sometimes problematic. Now, transparency is a top priority for me, but some of these problems recorded are matters that cannot be publicly discussed for legal reasons. But the incident that Glenn Lazar described in his memo was not the first one of this kind that was brought to my attention. And unfortunately, I myself have experienced a similar incident with Sabrina. <coughs> now, Mr. Lazov came to the district just a couple of weeks ago with a clean slate, with no ties to the Harbor District or San Mateo County politics, and the approval of the full board. All five commissioners voted to appoint Mr. Lazov, and all five commissioners voted two days later to approve his contract. 
He has not been involved in the tumultuous history of the district. The fact that he felt harassed and the need for drastic action on his third day of working for the district is a cause for grave concern to me. I want to emphasize that supporting reorganization of the district board is a very difficult decision for me. However, my commitment to the district and the residents of San Mateo County requires me to make tough choices from time to time. Some members of the public will agree with me and some members will disagree with me. And I'm open to hearing from and working with everyone. And lastly, I would, I want to suggest at the next regular meeting that we discuss temporary commission communication rules that all commissioners on this board outside of regular meetings communicate with the general manager by email only, only in writing, so we all will have to put 10 extra seconds into how we word things and how we, how we communicate things, and we'll also have a written record of that communication. I think we need to move forward right now with leadership that honors the public trust that has been placed in our hands. And so I will start this voluntary communication effort today, and I hope that other commissioners will, will do the same. Thanks. Is there any other discussion? Thank you. <clears throat> um, my statements were prepared for the agenda item tonight regarding reorganization, so this was obviously before the uh, passing of the, uh, the gavel. So I'm just going to read my notes. I've had the pleasure of serving on the San Mateo County, County Harbor Commission since January 2011, and by early 2013, I noticed that the Harbor District began heading in the wrong direction. We've seen an increase in tensions between community members, harbor tenants, and district consultants. We've also seen an unprecedented number of departures from the harbor district in key positions such as human resources director and two directors of finance. Two. In the backdrop of all that, we have seen skyrocketing legal bills. In fact, if you compared our legal bills in 2013 to the present, you'll see a thousand percent increase Feel free to do a PRA request on that. Some of you might recall that when I asked for an audit back in 2013 as to why the legal bills were skyrocketing, the results showed that one commissioner was primarily responsible for these rising costs. Presently, uh, it's been mentioned, it's been mentioned in the paper, there is a tort claim uh, made against, uh, against the district by a current employee, all related to uh, one particular commissioner. And the constant barrage of public records requests that come from this commissioner and her friends have also cost the district staff time and money. And most recently, as we've just discussed, Acting General Manager Glenn Lazoff sent Harbor District staff two memos regarding inappropriate behavior by a commissioner. Now, in the past, I have not been outspoken because I truly believed and I truly wanted to give Commissioner Brennan a chance to make this district better. I was one of the five unanimous votes to elect her president. However, some of the disturbing patterns of behavior uh, that Commissioner David ha have mentioned that she's noticed, I've also noticed, and some that have arisen that cannot and should not be ignored. Um, and despite the passing of the gavel, we, I believe that this, these items should still be discussed. Um, blatant disregard for um, the law. Uh, for example, according to California Government Code Section 54963, a person may not disclose closed session items unless the legislative body authorizes disclosure of that confidential information. Our attorney has admonished a commissioner at least once at a previous board meeting for attempting and violating the disclosure of confidential items discussed in closed session. Um, as we've heard tonight from uh, Jeff Clark, uh, we've seen rising tension between fish buyers and between surfers. At the heart of this divisiveness is, is a commissioner, one commissioner, who has actively worked to pit groups against one another. 
Um, for those of you who don't know the background, Commissioner Brennan had in fact approached the California Coastal Commission to influence the outcome of one of our harbor tenants' permits. And that resu resulted in that harbor tenant bringing their attorney to our meeting. Similarly, if Commissioner Brennan had not manufactured a surfing controversy regarding the titans of Mavericks and cartel in the media, the cartel attorney would probably have not attended our meeting to threaten the district with lawsuit. Then there's the recent issue about the IT purchases that you've all heard about. Commissioner Brennan has made some pretty bold allegations about our IT business partner called the Well Connected Office. These are the folks who keep our computer systems operating on a daily basis. They get paid below market rate. And Commissioner Brennan has publicly accused them of everything from fraud to theft. What's the reality? There is no fraud, there is no theft, there's no criminality whatsoever. That situation with our IT consultant could have yet been another lawsuit against the district. It's considered a best practice among public agencies for elected officials to not get involved in the day-to-day -day management and operations of an agency. In fact, if you look at the City of Mountain View's Code of Ethics, for example, they clearly state that an elected official should not interfere with staff activities. And finally, our interim general manager has only been on the job for two weeks and he's already claimed harassment. This pattern of behavior cannot be ignored and, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it will stop and that's why for me tonight was the tipping point and that's why I was one of four commissioners who voted for this special meeting and we desperately need new leadership and it seems like we, we have it now. Um, because as commissioners, we all have a duty to bring greater stability to this district, especially when we are under the microscope of LAFCO review. And I'm not saying it because I wanted to be president. I've already had my turn in 2013. Um, but we do this all for the taxpayers in the county who don't want their property tax dollars to pay for lawsuits caused by commissioners. We do this for the Harbor District employees who continue to feel marginalized and hopefully that, that will end. And we do this for our community stakeholders who don't want to be pitted against one another. And, and truly enough is enough. And, and so I'm, I'm encouraged by, by the new leadership at hand. And I thank everyone for their time for my, my long presentation. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to say I'd like to thank everybody for attending this meeting. It uh, it says a lot when there's a, such a, an item of public interest, and it's very for me it's a learning experience to hear the different sides and different perspectives, and the ideas that people have brought forth. But I'd like to also take this opportunity to remind everybody here that has made comments specifically about the uh, source of this meeting as being a special meeting hastily called. And I would just like to correct, in doing so, I'd like to correct something that Commissioner Bernardo uh, mentioned that when the current president was elected president, it was a unanimous vote. I was not present at that meeting. And for that reason, I'd like to re recall and recollect to everybody here that has mentioned an opposite story. That meeting on January the 7th was a special meeting called on January the 5th for the purpose of reorganization of officers. And along inside that meeting, there were 15 or 16 other agenda items. So I would just like to uh, get everybody uh, to understand that there is precedent for having this done. And it happened when I was removed as president on January the 7th of 2015. Thank you. Um, gosh, I don't know where to go with this. Um, I, I would like to, since Commissioner Pervana just spoke, um, and it's on my mind, state that um, the previous board voted to cancel the first meeting in January and had that not happened and the previous board 
was asked to reinstate the meeting but did not want to do it. Um, so when there were two new board members elected, the only way to reinstate what would have been our regular meeting held at our regular time on the regular day, as far as I can recall, was to call a special meeting because the past board had canceled our regular meeting. So just wanted to clarify that. And um, none of these comments have gone unheard. I mean, I'm definitely hearing the input from the board. I don't, um, I don't agree with all of them. I think that um, I think I understand a little bit about where they're coming from. Um, some cases I do, some cases I don't. I can relate to Commissioner Bernardo's comments um, because these these are things that have been coming up over time. I don't feel that. The district's legal fees are um, something that I have any control over. And when I filed my complaint against General Manager Grinnell, just weeks into my first, and into my being on the board, so this was, this was after the very first closed session meeting I ever attended, um, and I made my harassment complaint. It's been a long and very exhausting experience. Um, there have been multiple interviews with investigators. Shortly after I made my complaint against Brunel, <coughs> Two complaints were filed against me, and some version of those complaints still kind of persists to this day. I don't know where that's headed. Um, I've done my best to be as cooperative as I possibly can be. I don't feel like any of the board members sitting here know anywhere close to the full information on what's gone on with these investigations. And they have been, in my opinion, incredibly poorly done, slanted, and completely unfair. And I have brought that issue up repeatedly, and so has my attorney. I have never once sent an invoice for my attorney to this district. I have not had any of my legal fees covered by this district. I have paid every last cent out of my pocket at great expense and great emotional expense. And it's been a really painful process. And I, I do feel that there's been retribution and I feel that things have been slanted by counsel, and there are multiple attorneys involved here, not, and not talking about my counsel. Um, I feel things have been incredibly slanted in the way that they've been communicated back to the board members. <coughs> There's been a manipulation of information. There's been an outright cover-up of key evidential information which was called out and when it was called out when it was discovered and when it was called out peter grinnell retired and there was a lot more i could say about it which i shouldn't be talking about but i i'm i'm just really at the breaking point with these persistent investigations and the the uh, complaints that have stacked up against me by our staff And I feel like I've been targeted, and I feel like I've paid a really heavy price, and I definitely have been considering whether or not it's worthwhile to keep, keep going with this. And because I'm afraid that if I quit, 
and, and leave this board and walk away from this responsibility to the voters who elected me, I am afraid that I will be personally sued and I know for a fact that a former commissioner has instructed one of the staff members to file complaints against me. So I just want to give people a little window into what my world has been like. And it's still ongoing. So um, I really don't feel that I have any control over these legal costs. All of my legal costs have been borne by me. I think that's, I've said enough. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Bernardo? I'm sorry, can you please restate the motion? I got lost. In sure, there is a motion by commis uh, Commissioner Brennan, a second by Commissioner David to appoint or nominate uh, Mr. M Commissioner Matouche as president. Aye. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner David? Aye. Commissioner Paravano? Aye. Commissioner Matouche? Aye. I think we've got to open up uh, the Vice President nomination, so I'd like to start by nominating uh, Nicole David for the position of Vice President of the Board. I second that. Discussion? Roll call? Uh, Commissioner Bernardo? Aye. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner David? Aye. Commissioner Paravano? Aye. President Matouche? Aye. Uh, secretary. <laughs> we need a Board Secretary since Unless uh, somebody wants to hold two or three positions. I nominate Robert Bernardo as secretary. I second it. Discussion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bernardo? Aye. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner David? Aye. Commissioner Paravano? Aye. President Matouche? Aye. Uh, we have uh, a position for treasurer. Uh, do we have a nomination for treasurer? I nominate Peter Paravano as treasurer. I second that. Discussion. <laughs> uh, roll call. Commissioner Bernardo? Aye. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner David? Aye. Commissioner Paravano? Aye. President Matouche? Aye. All right, uh, with that, I believe that it's time to adjourn this meeting and let the public go home and digest this. I move to adjourn. I'll second. second. Meetings adjourned.